Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's webinar. It is a pleasure to have all of you connecting here in a session that we've entitled Tips for Success in the Football Industry. We are delighted to have as our invited speaker, Richard Lamb. Richard is a business consultant, an academic, and he's also a former executive at clubs, including Manchester United, Inter Milan, and West Ham, I'm um, consulting for other sports organizations. So, Rich, it's a pleasure to have you here tonight. Welcome. Thanks, Diego. Uh, really good to be here. And uh, hi to everyone who's uh, currently online. Fantastic. Well, let me introduce myself, who um, I'll be moderating the session tonight. My name is Diego Valdez. I am the Director General at the Sports Business Institute Barcelona. For those of you that may be uh, haven't had uh, exposure to our previous webinars or don't know what we do. We are an institute, a sports business institute based out of Barcelona. And what we do is we deliver uh, executive education programs, particularly focused on the business side of the football industry. We are based in Barcelona. We have an office, in fact, just across Camp Nou uh, here in the city. Uh, although most of the programs that we offer are international, are global, and delivered online with live lessons uh, with platforms such as the one we're using tonight. Um, before we get started and we, we have the conversation with uh, Rich, who I'm sure we're going to learn a lot from, um, I want to make sure that uh, the audio is coming through properly on your end. And in order to do that, uh, we take advantage to also engage with you and find out where you're connecting from. So what I would ask is that in the chat box, you would type the city or the country where you're connecting from, and that way we'll know that the sound is working on your sound, on your end rather. So uh, great, Hamza says loud and clear from Belgium. Nice to see you, Hamza. Thomas is here as well. Fantastic. Rowan is in Utrecht, Francisco in Tucson, Arizona, Ukraine, um, India, Nigeria. Okay, fantastic. Uh, London. Uh, wow, excellent. So I saw the names pop by Alba from Barcelona. Alba, nice to see you. Um, Oli from Barcelona as well. So some familiar names. Right. So Rich, as you can see, um, global audience from uh, from uh, different corners of the of the world. Um, right. Um, so as uh, we uh, move forward with the webinar tonight, uh, what I will do is I will outline what the structure will be uh, for this webinar, which should last approximately anywhere from 16 minutes. Maybe we'll go over by 10, 15 minutes, but we'll try to keep it short um, because we know that you also have tight agendas and uh, schedules to meet. So this is the way that we've structured the webinar tonight. Obviously, we've done the introduction. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn it over to Richard for him to provide us some insights, some tips, some advice uh, on how to optimize a career in the football industry. Obviously, he's going to be speaking from his experience. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the different strategies and approaches that you can take in order to accelerate, optimize, and find ways to uh, break into the football industry if that's your situation. Um, after that, um, we want to inform you about our Master in Football Business and Management, which is starting next month, uh, and where, in fact, uh, Richard is going to be collaborating with SBI um, on, um, on an academic basis, which we'll talk about that in just a, a little bit later in the webinar. And then finally, and this is uh, important for you to know, we want you to stick around because at the end, we're going to open the microphones, we're going to turn it over for your questions, and we'll try to get to as many questions as we can within the time that we have for you to tell us what are your aspirations, what are your goals, and perhaps if you're looking for some tips, some advice, we'll try and provide something that is more personalized or customized to what you tell us uh, when we open up the Q&A session. Um, right, before uh, getting started as well, I just wanted to let you know that um, we are on Instagram. Our account is sbibarcelona.com. And what I would encourage you to do tonight is take a screenshot of any part of this webinar that you find insightful, that you find, inter that you find interesting, tag us and put us in a story on Instagram. And for those that do, 
we're going to send you a nice little bonus um, that you can uh, redeem via Instagram DM. So uh, be sure to tag us at any point when you feel it's relevant, when you feel that there's something of value that you've learned. Put the story, tag us, SBI underscore Barcelona, and we'll be sending you via DM. Our team will be sending you um, a nice little bonus that um, I'm sure you're going to enjoy. That said, um, Rich, with the introductions out of the way, we want to turn it over to you. So tell us about your career path, your trajectory, because um, obviously you've worked for these organizations, these football clubs. And as I mentioned, um, you're also a business consultant, you're in academia. So tell us about your trajectory, because I'm sure our audience wants to know about your background. Uh, thanks, Diego. Yeah, sure. Um, I think, I, you know, um, I actually wanted to talk about two things uh, sort of that, that would be of use to, to, to the listeners. Um, rather than sort of give a detailed resume of, of what I've done, which would probably be of interest to, to no one, not even myself. But just to give a very quick overview, um, I, I, I had the good fortune to join Manchester United in 2012. I was based in their Hong Kong office um, and, I, and I was uh, focused on sponsorship sales. Uh, I then I was there for, for about four years. Um, after that, I joined Inter Milan. Um, I was based in Jakarta. Uh, as some of you will, will probably know, the previous owner, uh, Eric Tahir, um, is, a, is an Indonesian businessman and, and now politician. Um, and I worked uh, in his office and, and I worked very closely with the executive team on the sale of the club to, to Suning. Um, and then after my, my time in Jakarta and a, and a brief spell in Milan, um, I then joined West Ham in, in London. Uh, where I worked as the chief revenue officer, so I looked after the uh, the commercial aspects of the club. Um, so in total, probably uh, about twelve years in 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 football. Um, I did a consultancy role looking at the commercial aspects of the NFL, so the National Football League, uh, the, the you know American football um, in their London office. Uh, and since then, I've I've taken a step back into academia. Uh, and I'm currently doing a part-time PhD as, as well as the other consultancy ro roles that I do. Um, that's just a sort of an overview of me. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about is a couple of things, uh, Diego. So I don't know if that's the next slide. Um, but hopefully th this is of more use to the listeners. Um, and, I'm, and I've divided it into two sections. So first of all, it's for those of you who are not yet within the football industry, um, I'm going to talk about just sort of ways that you can get into the football industry. Obviously, this is going to be very quick, but it's something that hopefully if you join the course, um, we'll be able to sort of look at in more detail, uh, especially on an individual basis as part of the mentoring program. And for those of you that are already in the football industry, um, I'm also going to very quickly offer some tips on, on ways that you can improve your career direct, uh, trajectory whilst you're already within the industry. So just on that first piece, um, how to get in the industry. I think um, whilst there's no simple answer, and, and it's something that we can talk about in a lot more detail over the coming months, uh, for, for those of you that, that hopefully join the program, um, I think that, that there is a tendency for those people who are interested in football and want to join the football industry to, to think that because they're very passionate and very knowledgeable about football, you know, maybe they can name every first team of Liverpool since the 1960s and they're hugely knowledgeable about tactics, that, that that's the number one sort of thing that you need in order to get into the football industry. Now, in some cases, that may be true. Um, some clubs really love a, a, a very passionate fan and they focus on recruiting people who are fans of the club. Um, Diego, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think Barcelona uh, FC used to be used to be like that and, and may still be. Um, at other clubs, it's not the case. They, they don't particularly want fans. They're looking for people who um, can offer them something. And I think that's the, the, the key takeaway from this point that I'm going to make is, is it's really important if you're going to join the football industry, for those of you who aren't already in the industry, is to think about what do you offer a club? Now, a football club to us as football fans is obviously a, a, a squad and, and they play within leagues and, and win games, hopefully. But also it's a business and it is a company. And so 
thinking about it from a business perspective, have a think about just over the next few minutes, you know, what is it that you offer a, a, a football club and, and if you like a football business or a football company? Now, it, 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 may, it could be very, very broad. Um, for example, I was in sales before I joined Manchester United. And I'll talk a, a bit about how I got that job at Manchester United in a moment. But it doesn't only have to be revenue generation through sales, sponsorship or ticketing sales. It could be through IT. Um, you know, the person who sat opposite me when I worked at Manchester United uh, had worked at Salesforce for 10 years. And he joined Manchester United uh, via Salesforce, uh, which is a, an incredible transition, really. Uh, he was delighted about it. Um, you could be a graphic designer. Uh, you know, a club like Manchester United, for example, has a, a huge team of graphic designers um, who help, who assist the sponsorship sales team in, in putting together the presentations, but who also help the social media team as well by creating some, some fantastic, innovative content. Um, so graphic design is, is a way, it could be digital marketing, could be social media. Um, and then of course it can be management positions for, for those of you who are already senior in your respective careers. So when you think about football club, I mean, obviously we are all fans and, and we love football, but also try and think of it as a business and think about what do you offer? Or if you don't offer it at the moment, what, what can you, what skills can you learn over the coming months and years in order to help you get that foot into the uh, into the industry. Now, for those of you who are already in the industry, I think it's probably worth talking just very quickly about some of the some of the sort of tips that I that I have um, having been through sort of uh, the, the process myself. And I think um, there, there are four key things that I learned uh, in in the in the time that I worked within the football industry. Um, first of all, I think it's important to, to stay relevant with the, with the latest knowledge. And I'll give you an example. Um, I'd already spent a couple of years at Manchester United working in sponsorship sales. I'd closed a few deals. I was generating revenue from the club and, and I was doing well. But I also realized that I lacked some very, very core skills um, in order to improve my own career trajectory. And, and one of those for me, self-identified, was, was social media. I, I really wasn't very um, familiar with social media. I wasn't very good at it. So actually I undertook a course that Diego offers and that, that's how I first got to know Diego and first got to know SBI. I took the uh, online digital marketing course and it really gave me the, if you like, at a, at, a, at, a, at a top level, it gave me how to use the right terms. Um, so that when I'm talking to marketeers and digital marketeers, at least at the first point, I know it sounds like I know what I'm talking about. And then you can build your knowledge from there. And that's through, you know, experience and talking to, to your colleagues who work in the marketing team in order to understand how content can be different on Instagram, on, on Facebook, and, and, and how you talk to different audiences using uh, sort of different techniques, etc. And, and that helped me really with, with, with during my interview to Inter because it was a much more senior role at Inter. It was international business director, which included aspects of marketing, especially in the APAC, uh, Asia Pacific region. Um, and really the, the, the knowledge that I had, had learned um, through speaking to my colleagues, but also at SBI really had then helped me with that interview um, to expand the role that I have for the, for the promotion. I think secondly is is the football industry is big, but it's also, um, you know, you get to know a lot of people very quickly because the people that work within the football industry tend to stay there a long time. I'm, I'm not going to say it's a close knit family because I, I don't think it is a family, but you, you get to you get to recognize the same people and, and you get to know everyone. I think it's really important that you spend the time that you work within the football industry to build your networks. Now, obviously that's within the club that you work in, but also the other clubs, um, not only in your own league, so it could be England or it could be in, say for example, Spain, but also across different countries and leagues as well. And then, you know, as well as federations like UEFA, FIFA, etc. And I think that the football industry is, is, it's a nice old fashioned industry in the sense that it's really about people that you know, it's about good networks. And so whilst those of you that already work in the industry, I'm sure you're very proficient at your jobs and you're doing great, 
but also if you can if you're not doing so already spend time just to really reach out to people in the industry either via linkedin or through your through your contacts that you have and and get to know people and, and it really helps you when you look for that promotion and, and look to sort of develop your career within the, in the within the industry a third step you could do is for those of you that that work for organizations that promote this you can look to have a mentor scheme so if you if you have a really good manager you know speak to your manager and say is it possible that either you can mentor me or you know if there's someone within the organization maybe it's someone a lot more senior like the chief exec or, or the coo or something and you can speak to them about a mentorship program because from my experience football clubs tend to be very siloed you have sponsorship sales you have ticketing you have marketing and it's often that the, the different departments don't really talk to each other and, and they tend to just work within those silos. But if you want to move up the ladder and you want to get promoted, and especially to the very senior roles, then you need to know more about how these other departments work and what they do. And so one way to do that is, is to get to know those people in those departments. And so, you know, mentorship is a great way in order to do that. And you can work with more experienced people to, for them to really help you understand um what their jobs like and, and the, the the mistakes that they've made and how they've learned from them it, it will it will really help you uh, get that step up and then i th i think the uh the, the final one is of course gaining direct experience you know um football clubs are, are, are great businesses to work for um just just learn as much as you can all the time you know i'm sure all of you that work in the industry already go to the games you know, go to the games, go to the training facilities, talk to as many people as you can and really get to know the inner workings of the club and, and how, how the club works. And when you move up the ladder, either at that club or at a new club, you can really sort of use those skills that you've learned. So um, I'll just just a final minute, um, Diego, I just wanted to go back to sort of talking about how I got into the football industry for, for those of you who who were looking to get in the industry and it goes back to my point around thinking about what skills do you offer that a club would want and i just want to sort of emphasize that by talking about my own experience um i i when i left university i never actually intended to to join the football industry i mean i'm a huge football fan and and i'm really glad that i did but i i, I it wasn't a career path that i really considered i i didn't know anyone that was in it but I, I did Chinese studies at university. Um, I spent many, many years in, in, in China. Um, I worked as a translator, as, as an interpreter. So I, I'm fluent in Mandarin. And I became very familiar with, with business practices in China, having lived and worked in the country for uh, what ended up being around 15 years. Now, I worked in sales for a few years for a Chinese organization selling greenfield land so i would sell just plots of land to foreign companies looking to build manufacturing plants um very very different from what it sounds like to football but i, I saw one day someone uh, a recruitment agency had, had put an ad in the online that the a football club was looking to expand in asia and they were looking to um, find people with local expertise in markets such as China, Japan, Korea, Southeast Asia, etc. And so whilst I'd never worked in the football industry before, I applied for the job because there was many similarities in sponsorship sales to, to what I was doing in, in China. And, and I got the job. Um, I was offered the role, not because I knew very much about Manchester United. I mean, of course, everyone knows about Manchester United. It's, it's the big, one of the biggest clubs in the world. But you know, I wasn't, uh, a, a, I'm not a fan of Manchester United. I support another club and, and I wasn't hugely knowledgeable about the inner workings of a football club. And I said that during my interview and their response was, we're not looking for people to tell us about football. We understand football. What we're looking to do is for people to tell us about. And in this case, it was for me, it was about China, about how to expand their business and, and their sponsorship portfolio in China. Now, I, I then had a uh, a, a colleague from Japan who could then replicate what I offered in China, but for Japan, Korea, Southeast Asia, etc. So, again, that's just my own trajectory within sponsorship sales, and with the you know the fact that I that I speak Mandarin, and I offered that expertise to to Manchester United. But have a think about also what skills you offer 
Um, and it can be anything from IT to Salesforce to, you know, nothing is, is too unusual if it's what a club is looking for. Um, and, and as I mentioned, we can talk about this over the coming weeks and months, which, you know, hopefully you guys join the program and, and we can talk about it in more detail. Diego, I hope that was useful. I'm going to uh, hand it back to you. Yeah, no, fantastic, Rich. It's really interesting to hear about your trajectory and how you got started and how you got started and some of the tips that you've shared with, uh, you know, with our audience. And, um, I just want to make sure that the slides are properly being displayed because I got a chat message from somebody saying that they're not able to see them. So maybe if you just can, can, can say yes or no, if you're seeing the slides, because we obviously we want you to see the visual support that we've um, prepared for all of you tonight. So if um, some of you on the chat can just confirm or uh, just tell us uh, whether the slides are coming through and uh, you can see them on your side, that would be great. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, good. Yes. So there's, there's the slide there on career optimization for now. Um, perfect. Um, Good. So most people say yes, and then some of them uh, who uh, have said that uh, I can only see our faces, uh, Rich, and then uh, that's probably maybe because they're connecting from a mobile. So uh, that might be the issue. Um, hopefully, you guys can um, can see them at some point if you're able to adjust your settings to the WebEx platform. Uh, nevertheless, um, if you still cannot see the slides, I guess the important part is obviously what we're going to be sharing here um, um, from a verbal standpoint. Um, just a, a couple of follow up points, Rich. I mean, you obviously mentioned some really good points um, and, and you talk about network. So what would you say are some ways that, you know, because obviously building a network takes time, it requires trust, it requires adding value. Um, and there's probably, and we'll get to some of the questions to, of our attendees, but there's probably some people tonight wondering and saying, well, how do I get started and build a network? Because, um, you know, it's not always easy reaching out to people. So what would you say are some tips or some of the, maybe some challenges or what are, what are some advice or, or some pieces of advice that you would give on how to best connect and start building and nurturing a network? Absolutely. I think, uh, first of all is, is be patient. Um, you know, the, 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 a network takes time. And what I mean by that is, is, you know, it's been it's been well over ten years since I joined Manchester United, but because I spent time building my relationships with the people at the club, and you know, getting to know people and making sure I spent time, um, sort of you know, getting to know them and vice versa, and, and building that kind of bond, if you like. Um, as the years have gone by. Uh, those people have moved to different clubs. They've they've all moved into different areas of the football industry, and what that means is is that you know if I'm working for you know as a as a business consultant now, if I'm working on a project which maybe involve either another football club or it involves a federation like UEFA or FIFA or it involves even a different sport um, like athletics, for example. When I go through the list of the people that work there, I tend to find people that I have worked with before, either directly as colleagues at the same cl uh, club or just people that I've interacted with over the years. And, and that's something that takes time. Um, you know, that, that, so uh, do be patient. Um, maybe, maybe you're looking to, to achieve something and you want to do it really quickly and you're only focused on talking to the people that can help you deliver that objective. Um, while that's great in the short term, you, you may get a you may get a bit of a reputation for someone who's not that interested in the other people around them, unless it's really directed at, at, at what you're trying to achieve. But also think long term, you know, try and try and get to know people and build those friendships. And, you know, friendship is, is probably too strong. A word for, you know, that bond, if you like, with with people within the industry. Um, and then, uh, and, and then, you know, in the future, you, when everyone that you get to know spreads around the industry over the years, you, you've got a great, uh, network that you can reach out to, um, in order to achieve you, you, your goals at, at that particular time. The other thing I would say for those that are getting started, I think that, um, it, it it's really important to have a platform. And, and what I mean by that is, I don't mean a social media platform. What I mean by that is, I'm not going to pretend that people were willing to speak to me because my name is Richard and, and you know, I, I'm a wonderful human being or something. You know, it's not about that at all. 
It's the fact that I work to Manchester, for Manchester United, and that's what I mean by a platform. So if I would reach out to someone and they would see on my LinkedIn profile or they'd see on your email or your business card, you know, they're not really looking at your name. They may not actually care about who you are. But if they see that you work for a company or a club, which is, you know, has a good reputation, is a, is a big, big company or club within the particular industry, you know, they're, they're, then they tend to be more open to talking to you and, uh, and getting to know you. So um, I know it's sort of chicken and the egg, well, which comes first, but I think, you know, definitely be patient. Um, for those of you looking to get your first step into the industry, again, networks are important, of course, but, but most important is what do you offer which can help you get that foot in the door? What do you offer them that they need? And then once you've got that foot in the door, spend your time, get to know people, because over the next 10, 20 years, as you build your career, all those people you get to know are going to be spread all over the industry and they're going to be a huge resource for you, especially if you get, for those of you that get to really senior levels in a football club, if you're chief executive of a football club and you want to buy a player and you know the other person you're, you're dealing with, it makes life a lot easier. Yeah, very interesting. Absolutely. I mean, patience is, uh, is of utmost importance, when, uh, especially for those starting out. Um, now, uh, you also talked about uh, finding a mentor and trying to find someone who can guide you. Um, based on your experience, how easy, how difficult is it to find a mentor that you can count on for support, that you can go on and, and who's willing to take the time and spend that, um, you know, to help you grow within your career or, or uh, give you some advice as to, you know, how to accelerate that path. So based on your experience, did you have any mentors or how easy, difficult was it for, you know, for people to, uh, like yourself or others to, to identify a mentor who was willing to, to help them? Um, at, at the time when I worked at different clubs, there, there wasn't a mentor program. Um, so what I would tend to do is rather than actually ask someone whether they would be open to a mentorship, which really depends on the person. Some some people may see it as a bit too forward, if you like, um, is really just to, you know, try and learn from, you know, to, to identify people within the within the organization who you who you really respect and and who you imagine is the kind of manager or or the kind of person that you want to become um and and just you know try, first of all try and observe them at work be it when when you're in a meeting how do they deal with certain situations um how do they i mean for example you know i had a mentor when i worked at inter milan uh, he was he was um i won't say who was obviously but he he was uh, one of the senior managers there and it was very much just through interaction. It was um, watching how he dealt with the with the with the with the with the club, but most importantly, how he dealt with individuals. So, you know, for for a chief exec or for a senior manager, how do you get the most out of your team? You know, there are some people that respond much better to an art, you know, uh, you know just an arm around the shoulder. Hey, how are you doing? You know, they they respond much better to a positive environment. Um, to sort of a, a positive energy helping them to move along. And then there are others who respond better to, 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 to sort of uh, motivation in terms of, you know, here's, here's where I want you to be in six months and, and I expect you to get there. You know, they, they like that more old fashioned sort of, um, sort of management style, which puts, puts a lot of pressure on them. So it's about identifying and understanding. This is one of the things that I learned from this particular manager. It's about identifying a diff, the, the particular characteristics of a person and, and obviously a team is made up of many different people and, and finding what works best for them and, and how you get the best out of people. Um, and, and I found him a, a, a superb manager of, of um, you know, A, because he was very organized and he, he was a trained accountant. So he was good at the, uh, at the accounting side and he was good at the organization and the structure. But what I learned most from him is, is that he, he had time for people because he understood that within a football club, but within any organization, it's people that make up that club. And, and to get the most out of people, you've got to be react. You've got to be someone who understands what makes them tick. You know, are they people that react better to a certain style of management and, and you can adjust. Um, that, that's what I, that's what I, I learned very much from him. So, um, 
but those mm-hmm. those of you that work within organizations that have an official mentorship program then obviously you can talk to your hr department and and see what they can offer right right well really interesting stuff um some some great tips um what we're going to do now is we're going to move on because we're interested to hear your questions we're interested to hear uh, what you have uh, to uh, ask um, to uh, Richard tonight. Um, so what I would ask is that you start thinking of the questions that you'd like to ask and you know, start, start um, you know, um, identifying any areas that you'd like to, to discuss. Because in the meantime, while we uh, get to the Q&A period, um, we want to let you know about our Master in Football man- Management, um, Business and Management starting in October. So this is a program that we run at SBI and we've run it successfully for the past number of years. It's an online program with live lessons, which includes sessions with top executives from the football industry on a weekly basis. And it's complemented with online material um, through our online campus and different platforms that we use to engage with students from across the world. Now, what I'd say is that there's um, different areas that the course covers, which in fact touch upon some of the points that, um, that Rich has talked about. And the first one is, if you want to get ahead in the football industry, particularly, um, you know, one of the things you need to know, and, and uh, Rich alluded to this before, is you really need to have an understanding of how the industry works from the inside, um, from a business standpoint, of course. If you already have a corporate experience in the business world, this obviously is is um, you know knowledge that you can transfer, um, but it does come down to have a competitive CV because it's a very competitive sector, um, irrespective of the club, the organization, or you know the, the federation, etc., where you want to work at. There's um, you know very valuable professionals that are working and that are being hired because of their knowledge, because of um, you know the competencies. So one of the things that I would suggest that if you're looking to get into the football industry and further to what Richard was saying is have a deep understanding of how it works, because if you don't, you're going to be in a vulnerable position. So what we do with this master's program is we invite top professionals from all across the football industry. They've worked across numerous clubs, federations, you know, sports marketing agencies, media rights companies, representation firms, um, et cetera. So what we wanted to do is create a program that rather than being too focused on an academic standpoint in the sense um, the textbook theory we wanted to bring the people that have done it that are doing it uh, in the football industry to come and tell you uh, about their experience and what's happening in the industry today so obviously richard is um, a great pleasure to have him as a collaborator and academic coordinator for the course um, and the experience that he brings as he's already mentioned from the different clubs that he's participated in the football industry um, but apart from him, we have a star lineup of the executives that have worked in clubs such as FC Barcelona, organizations such as FIFA, um, the German Federation, Manchester City. I mean, we have people from all across the globe, CONCACAF, um, you know, different organizations, because what we wanted to do was a couple of things. Number one, that you guys would gain the knowledge, direct knowledge from people that are doing this day in, day out and have experience having done it at the top organizations in football. Um, And secondly, to optimize your network. Because as Richard alluded to before, building a network is key if you want to get in the football industry. And as as he said as well, it it takes time. I mean, if you do this on your own, um, I'm sure many of you here listening tonight have tried to connect with people on LinkedIn um or through other platforms and perhaps haven't had an answer or hadn't had a response and um, and that's you know um pretty standard really because let's face it um building a network takes time and it's about trust and it's about adding value and if people don't know who you are um and you're reaching out to them um and you're you know essentially unknown it can be difficult for some people some people are very open and their nature is to connect with you know, everybody and, and give an opportunity to speak. But many are busy, many are, are um, very selective as to who they connect with. So it takes time. Now, why am I saying this? Because if you do this on your own, it's possible. But what we've done in this program is we've made this into a collaborative community whereby not only the guest speakers that come in and deliver the sessions are there for you 
and you know you come out with um, um, an opportunity to engage with a lot of professionals that are already in the football industry. But the cohort that we select every year is um, very carefully looked at because we want profiles that add value to each other. This doesn't mean that we're looking for you know very senior, experienced football executives. Obviously, we have some. Um, but what we want is to create a collaborative community where those that come from the corporate world, those that are already in the football industry, and perhaps those young guys that are looking to break in, all work together towards the same objective, which is to grow, to develop themselves, to challenge themselves, and to form part of a community together throughout the, the program, whereby at the end, you not only feel as though you've built relationships, but in many cases, friendships or even potential partnerships. We've seen um, you know, several times where students have created partnerships and started businesses and projects together outside of the academic world from this master. So building a network is essential, and, and I'm sure everybody here knows about that. What it does is it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, and sometimes if you don't have that trust, if you don't have that relationship up front with people, you know, it's, it's difficult to, 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 you know, to have you um, move forward in a, in a more um, accelerated manner. Um, so something to think about if you uh, are out there and um, perhaps are thinking, well, I'm not connected in, in the football industry. Uh, how would I get started with that? You know, here in this type of program, what we've done is we've reversed engineered and looked at, okay, what are the challenges people are facing? And, and Richard alluded to these. What are those challenges? Well, let's, let's optimize those so that when people do the program, um, they're able to advance and accelerate across the number of areas that, um, you know, that are important if, um, if you want to have, um, you know, chances of success and optimizing your opportunities. Um, we're very proud at SBI that through the, the online platforms and online, you know, courses that we deliver, uh, we've reached, uh, basically, I think last time we checked, it was 93 countries across the globe. So throughout our nine years, because just recently we um, uh, made nine years in, in, in operation, we've had students from numerous parts of the globe. And of course, not only do you connect with your own cohort, but you also connect with an alumni community that many have gone on to work in football. So it's about helping each other out. And I always say this example, it's very different to contact somebody and say, hey, my name is so-and-so, I'd like to connect with you, do you have five minutes? Uh, then to do that same message and say, hi, uh, do you remember um, we, um, you know, I participated in your master class on such and such, or you know, even some of your classmates that may be in the football industry, you know, it's a much more soft approach, not, not a cold one that many times is the one that you know, doesn't allow that door to be open right away. So really does uh, make an impact when you create a community that's, like I said, collaborative and it's working together. These are just some of the select few organizations um, that we work with. Um, we have many, many more clubs, federations, you know, governing bodies, media agencies, like I said before, that we, we collaborate with. So when you are entering a program such as this, you are opening the doors to organizations that um, uh, potentially could be an avenue for you to explore further down the road. So um, we're very proud. I mean, um, in nine years, we've been, we've been able to build the relationships with a lot of these companies, with a lot of these clubs, um, and it's taken time and effort. And, and I don't say this to boast about SBI because that's not what we're here for, because the real objective is that every time we you know, connect with people from across different organizations, the aim is to provide value to you, the students. Um, now, at SBI, we, um, we were very lucky in the sense that um, we were able to establish a partnership with uh, different professional footballers organizations across um, various countries. And what that's done, it's enabled us to position our program, not just for those that want to work in football and that want to you know, break into the industry, uh, but in many cases, professional footballers. So here I've put a couple of examples. Um, we have uh, Wes Morgan, who is a former student of the master's program. Um, some of you may recognize as the captain of Leicester City, um, lifting that uh, cup with that miraculous title a number of years ago. So Wes did the program um, a couple of years ago and, uh, you know, uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. So there's a video on YouTube, if you want to check it out, where he gives his testimonial on this master and how it added value to him as a professional footballer. Um, and then last year we had Matt Ritchie. 
from Newcastle United. So those that are Premier League fans uh, might recognize some of these names. So Matt, um, you know, decided to come onto the program because he felt that um, when he moves out of football, which um, he's still got a number of years left uh, playing at the top level, but um, when he moves into his next phase of his career, he wanted to be in a leadership position. And he felt that he had the contacts, obviously, because he's been in football for all his life. But he felt that if he really wanted to move into a leadership position to be in management, he needed to have the knowledge. He needed to upskill himself. And in a program that didn't mean that he would have to you know, go um, be face to face in a class environment, because obviously he doesn't have the time. He's traveling, he's competing, he's training, um, much like Wes and some of the other players. I mean, I could talk about Troy Deeney, um, you know, some of these uh, guys that have done the course with us and, and have found a lot of value with it. Now, why do I say this? Because SBI, um, some of the students tell us, wow, it's a unique experience because in my cohort, not only did I have people with corporate experience and already, you know, established executives that are in the football industry, but I also had a Premier League player, you know, or, or other professional players from other countries um, that form part of the cohort. And when those discussions take place with, you know, we obviously have case studies and different assignments and different ways that, you know, you learn. Um, it's, um, it's an opportunity that, um, you know, many programs uh, don't have the luxury of, of offering that to say, well, you know, a Premier League champion, you know, coming in and talking about his experiences. And when he's talking about some of the issues that we're discussing, it's, um, um, you know, seen from a different prism than if you look at it from a strictly business side. So, that's very enriching for students. Now, sometimes people get intimidated who are younger and say, well, is this program for me? I mean, I don't have experience or I maybe just graduated. And the real value here, <clears throat> and this is some uh, a feedback uh, statement that we had from, uh, from a very high level executive at Manchester City who did a program with us. And when, when you know, he saw that there were a lot of younger guys uh, uh, who formed part of his cohort, one of the things he said is, I'm delighted that there's so many young people as my classmates because I want to know how they're consuming football. I want to know how they are looking at the game because that's the information that I need for my job. So in those discussions, even though those younger guys didn't have experience, they're fans and they're consuming the sport through streaming, you know, through esports, through different ways that, you know, a 45, 50 year old executive who's been in the industry for many years. Um, is not familiar with. So in those discussions, everybody enriches and adds value to each other, whether it's a player, whether it's a young guy who's coming out of university or somebody with um, you know, seasoned experience, whether in, in the corporate world or in the football industry. So that, that does go a long way um, from that standpoint. A couple of other points, and I don't want to ramble on because I want to, uh, I want to get to your questions, but I, I do think it's important to touch upon these um, and why we've developed the course in the way we have. Having a mentor, and again, um, I was I was asking Richard about this because one of the reasons we've set up the mentorship program or mentoring program, depending on, on which side of the uh, of the English language you you use, um, it's important because a mentor is going to guide you, is going to give you advice based on his experience, his or her experience, of course, um, uh, because they've done it before, and I mean, a lot of the people that um, want to look for mentors um, sometimes have a challenge because it's, it's, it's not easy. I mean, if it's difficult to connect with people, as we've just said, sometimes it's even more difficult to find someone who's willing to take the time to guide you, to look at where you're at and how you can you know, move forward in your career path. What we've done is we've established a, a mentorship program that is personalized. So everybody that comes on to the master's program will have mentorship sessions with Richard, who obviously um, you've seen here tonight with Julie Ferre, who's a sports marketing consultant and former head of partnerships at FC Barcelona, commercial director at AS Monaco. Um, and, you know, the mentors provide you customized advice, um, uh, career pathways that you can explore that are individual to you because a professional footballer is going to have different career objectives than somebody who wants to work in you know, a sponsorship role. Um, so it's important that these mentorship sessions are very much tailored to each individual student. And the reason this is important is because two things. Number one, it provides clarity. So if you're somebody out there who's thinking, I want to work in the industry, but I don't know where, 
I don't know how to get started. I don't know how to, you know, uh, leverage the skills that I already have. Um, this is an opportunity for you to talk individually, you know, executives like Richard, Julie, I myself also, I'm, um, I'm a mentor in, in helping people uh, with the introductory session and finding out a little bit more. And what we do is what is called app analysis exercise. In other words, we find out where you're at today, irrespective of your level of experience and, you know, academic background or professional background, where you're at today and where do you want to be? And based off of that, we identify gaps. And through the mentorship program, those gaps are filled. So are important to you. Number one, you gain clarity. And number two, and this is important as well, accountability. Because when you're working with someone who, you know, is taking the time to help you out, um, there's an opportunity for you to then say, okay, well, now I'm, I'm now I'm, um, I'm committed to this and I'm, I'm going to go all in and I'm going to make sure that I follow the advice. And in many cases, you'll see that that advice is going to point you in, in the right direction and it's going to lead you to, to where you want to go. Sometimes it's not a straight line, as we all know, but at least you have the advice of people that, you know, um, can guide you and uh, in a personal way, give you advice as to where you can take your career. So that's important. And then the last point, and this is something we've added this year, is we've collaborated for many years with the World Football Summit, which is a conference that takes place places in Madrid. So they have a very wide network. And what we've done is we've signed a partnership with them to offer our students guaranteed chips. Now, wherever you're based in the world, we will guarantee an internship, okay? So you have the option of doing it at home country, um, which can be face-to-face, -face, obviously, if you do it in your city or your country, or virtually if, say, you're based in a country where you can't move or now with COVID and the restrictions. So we will find an internship for you. It will be guaranteed. And then what this does is that on your CV, when you finish the master, you also have um, direct experience that you can put on your curriculum that's a sports organization or a marketing agency or a club or a governing body. So you have the option of choosing whether you want to do both and can choose from a wide array of organizations worldwide or face-to-face, -face, the World Football Summit will guarantee that internship. This has an additional add-on to the, to the master fee, so those that are interested get in touch and we'll, we'll inform you. Um, but it does guarantee an internship, and if you don't get the placement for any given reason, that add-on fee that you would have paid is refunded to you, no questions asked, if you don't have a, an internship. But we will, we will guarantee it for you, so that means that uh, um, you know, we will, we will present you with different opportunities. Um, finally, the last point is at the end and COVID permitting, we have two days in Barcelona. So we do the full program online with live sessions where everybody interacts. There's weekly, um, WhatsApp group sessions that we, that we run. So there's, there's constant touch points that are live and interactive. So you're not going to be online on your own and, you know, in a black hole studying on your own. You're actually going to be engaging on a weekly basis with, you know, with the professionals that we just mentioned and with your cohort. But at the end, we organize two days in Barcelona where we have workshops, networking events, social events, and we have a graduation dinner where everybody comes together. And obviously, Barcelona, we're very lucky to be based here. It's a great city. So there's a, you know, many opportunities to go to different places, both for professional and social events that we organize for you guys. So it's an opportunity to connect. I'll finish with this. Uh, the overwhelming common comment that we get when people get together here in Barcelona and they meet for the first time, well, for many of them is the first time that they meet. Um, they say to each other, I felt as I feel as though I already know you. I mean, we're meeting and we're shaking hands for the first time here in Barcelona, uh, but we've been eight months working on projects together collaborating on monthly basis, attending on lessons. Um, so I'm sure many of you have been in, in WhatsApp groups or are in WhatsApp groups with friends or colleagues, and you see how dynamic and how agile this, this platform is. Well, imagine being eight months in a group with like-minded peers who all have the same objective to grow, to develop themselves. I mean, you really get to know these people. And when you meet in Barcelona, it's, it's, a, it's a big party really at the end of the day. It's, a, it's an opportunity to, to really have a lot of fun but also organize professional events that, um, you know, that um, make it like a, a nice retreat for everybody to come together and, and wrap up the year. Um, that said, um, what I'll do now is I'll turn it over to Thomas 
Um, Thomas is a student uh, who just finished the master's program with us um, this last uh, edition. And he's connected here tonight and I've asked him to share his experience just briefly before we turn it over to the Q&A period. Because I think it's important that um, you don't just hear uh, the perspective of Richard or myself who are involved in the program, uh, but somebody who's done it and um, his experience. Um, so he's been very kind to you know, uh, allow us to, to have him come on here and, and share his experience and, um, and talk to us a bit uh, about uh, what he's done at SBI. So let me bring him on and then after that, we're gonna turn it to your questions and what you wanna know and ask uh, either Richard or myself. So Thomas, let me find you here and make you a panelist so that you can come on and share your camera and your microphone and you know maybe maybe tell everybody what uh, your experience was like um, when you did the, the program with us. So can you hear me? Can you see me well? We can hear you. Um, we can't see you yet, or at least I can't. But um, but I can hear you so. There we go. Now we see you and we hear you. All right. Thank you, Diego, for the opportunity. Hi, everyone. This is Thomas. Uh, I'm an IT professional with about 10 years of experience in the field, and I just completed the master's with the SBA last year. Uh, so one of the main drivers for me for connecting, uh, I mean, for taking up the course was the flexibility. Since I was a working professional, uh, the online portal offered me the flexible timing to you know, check out the course at my convenience. And uh, that was one of the main driver for me to choose the course. Uh, next one would be the SBI's fantastic tutor team, including Diego. They guided us every step of the way. So right from onboarding till our uh, project, final project evaluation, until we got our degrees, we were in touch with them and it was a fantastic experience. Um, and I cannot undersell this at any point, but the diverse student profile is something that I've never experienced in any other course before. Uh, right from Premier League players to players from other um, other leagues as well. So pro players, managers, coaches, top, top executives, and everybody were from different countries. So it allowed us the opportunity to connect. And I had the uh, fantastic opportunity to even work with Matt Ritchie and Franco, who is a coach of FC Basel. So we had all the uh, opportunity to connect. So that was a wonderful experience. And somebody coming from India, I wouldn't have got that opportunity had I not enrolled for this. So that was something, uh, a key highlight. And then uh, going back to the next one would be assignments and team projects, which were very relevant and uh, very current and up to date. So guidance was provided all along and uh, it turned out to be a very good experience for me. Uh, this is the point which uh, when I was doing, when I was searching for the course like you uh, one year back, this was the standout point which SBA offered where they offered career planning and mentoring. I was checking a few other courses and they were not um, actually offering uh, the career planning or the mentor mentorship programs. Here, I, they, in, here in the SBA prospectus, I saw that uh, they offered a one-to-one -one mentorship program and that was another sellout point that you know, made me uh, choose the course. So I just went ahead with it and turned out to be one of the best decisions I made in my life. And then we had the master classes and guest speakers who were uh, the top executives from, um, you know, uh, clubs like Liverpool, Manchester United, the AS Monaco, Barcelona, Inter Milan, and even Dutch Innovation Center. So since I'm from an IT background, that Dutch Innovation Center, that uh, uh, presentation was the key highlight that I would never forget. Um, and uh, finally, the online portal, which was available 24 by 7, uh, helped me learn um, whenever I wanted to learn. And uh, working uh, uh, for about 10 hours a day and at night, I used to connect. So that was my total experience. I know I couldn't uh, share a little uh, in depth, but feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm available on LinkedIn or on other social media as well, and I'll be happy to share my experience. Uh, over to you, Diego. Thank you, Thomas. No, really appreciate you taking the time and coming to share your, your experience and uh, how um, you, you benefited from the course because that's the biggest uh, validation and the biggest motivation for us to, to hear that our students are satisfied. They feel as though they're you know, moving in the right direction after having done the program with us. And just for everybody out there, uh, 
to know uh, after Thomas finished um, the course with us, uh, we identified him as such a talented individual because uh, the material that he delivered and um, everything that he submitted and, and prepared for his assignments that we've actually began collaborating professionally with Thomas as well. So it's, uh, it's always nice uh, to see that based on the relationship that started from a master's program, a student that was based in India, here we are now um, leveraging his IT background and, um, and collaborating across a number of projects, which, uh, which is fantastic. So thank you, Thomas. Really appreciate that um, you came on and um, were able to, um, to share your learning experience with everybody else. Right. Well, um, I think we've we've talked about the program and provided some some different um, um, yeah information of what it entails. Um, we've also had um, Richard um, deliver some tips and advice. So now what we want to do is turn it over to you. Uh, we want to hear what uh, your aspirations are, what your objectives are. Perhaps if you're stuck in certain areas or where you want to go. And we want to hear from you. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask Rich or myself, um, just uh, post it in the, in the, in the um, chat box or, or even just say, I have a question. And what we'll do is we'll unmute your microphone and we'll try to get to, to some questions um, and have you, um, you know, come and, uh, and uh, ask anything. So, um, so let's have a look here. Actually, we have uh, a few questions coming in. So I see that Rowan has a question. So Rowan, just a moment. I'm going to bring you on and see if you can unmute yourself and we can hear what you have to ask tonight. So one second, let me find you, Rowan. Here we go. So Rowan, let's see if you can unmute yourself and ask your question. So over to you. Hopefully you can hear us. So Rowan, unmute. Let's try that. Okay, it seems as if we're not getting Rowan's sound. So maybe um, not able to unmute, uh, he says. As, oh, sorry, as his partner is in the phone call. Okay, well, then... Um, if Rowan can't uh, come on, I see that Oliver, Oliver is actually going to do the program with us uh, coming up. So Oliver, over to you. Hopefully you can unmute yourself and we can hear your question. But There we go. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for the talk, Richard. Um, really insightful, really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, appreciate you coming on and uh, looking forward to hopefully hopefully meeting soon when I start the course. Um, but yeah, my question is, um, well, as someone who's working in sales currently myself, of the skills that you developed working in sales, which of these have proved most valuable in the football industry? And then off the back of that, um, what have you had to supplement these skills with in order to adapt? Uh, great question. I think that. Um... You know, you, you work in the sales industry already, so no doubt you're under a lot of pressure to always be closing and, and generating revenue, et cetera. And, 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 you know, you have KPIs every month or six months or a year, et cetera. I mean, whilst, whilst it's always important in, in sales to be very focused on making sure that you can, you know, move prospects through the, the pipeline or through the funnel down to, to closing, I think one of the skills that I really learned in sales, which was um, certainly very adaptable to, to the football industry uh, and especially the most valuable, I think, was, you know, successful salespeople uh, have the most, not all, but have the ability to also look at the, the client or the prospect and, and try and see the, the, the world from their perspective. So, you know, when I worked at Manchester United, we, we would run processes, sales processes, in many, many different categories over a course of a year. So they could be consumer products or it could be tires or it could be, you know, cars or, or, or soft drinks, carbonated drinks, et cetera. So many, many different industries um, and, and especially in different countries as well. So, you know, in, uh, in China or across Asia or for, for other colleagues across the Americas. And I think what's important is, is effective salespeople can, can really try and, um, 
try and understand what it's like to be sitting on the other side of the table and to think, OK, if I'm a if I'm a marketeer in the noodle industry in Southeast Asia, for example, you know, what what can this football club offer me? So one of the things that I noticed when I worked in football and and is a lot of the, of the sales presentations obviously talked about this is who we are. This is how many fans we have. This is how global our brand is, you know, et cetera. And that's obviously really important stuff. But I think that really effective salespeople, not only in football, but across any industry, really, can, if you can try and identify, try and look at it from the point of view of, of your prospect or your client and think, what problems does that person have? Now, I don't mean personal. I'm not interested in their marriage. But what I mean is, you know, they're, they're a marketing director, let's say, of a noodle company. And you think, OK, what are the challenges that they face? And, and certainly ask these questions. You know, the best sales meetings I had were were meetings where I was asking all the questions. And so it was, you know, what what challenges do you face currently in your marketing? And if they're, for example, a Japanese noodle company, but they're based in, but they, they're, you're talking to the marketing director in Southeast Asia, he might say, well, we're very popular in Japan, but we're having problems in, in Thailand, for example, because our, our brand messaging isn't working. So really get to grips with the challenges that that marketing director or executive is facing. And then over, you know, very quickly, just within half an hour of understanding what those problems are, then you offer a solution. And that's when you come in and say, well, you know, Manchester United or Inter Milan or whatever club it is, this is how we can help you deal with those problems. This is how we can help you ABC. And I thought that was a more effective um, sales approach because, you know, they would be a lot more interested in, in, in talking to you, especially now where the market has become so saturated. When I started with Manchester United in 2012, I would go to a meeting in Bangkok or in Seoul or in Tokyo, and you were it was either us or Barcelona who had ever met with them, who had ever reached out to them. But four years later, when I'd go and see a, a company which was relatively small, you know, they, they'd had clubs like Queens Park Rangers or, or Bolton speak to them. Now, okay, no, no disrespect to those clubs; they're great clubs, but you know, it had become such a saturated market where these marketing people are getting calls all the time from football clubs. And so I think rather than just talk about how amazing the club's history is and the legends that you have, which is the same message that every club is giving, really try and ask them, what problems are you facing? And then you provide them with, with the solutions. Um, and I think that applies to football, but that applies in, in any sales role, really, whether you're selling double glazing or you're selling shoe polish you know someone has dirty shoes well i've got shoe polish you know so um that that that's i hope that answers your question yeah it does thanks richard that makes perfect sense no just for that thank you ollie look forward to seeing you in october so just about a month left to, to get uh, uh ready to start uh, everyone's transformative journey so I'm looking forward to touching base soon all the best likewise thanks. diego looking forward to it excellent Take care. Um, right. Well, then let's move on to, I see that Antonio, Antonio Fumo has a question. Sometimes I just don't have the time to read it because it takes a little bit of a while to go through the chat. So I'll, I'll bring you guys on and uh, hopefully with that, um, you can come on with the sound. So uh, Antonio, let me try and find you here and we can get you to ask a question. So Antonio, you should be able to unmute yourself. Um, let us know if you can speak up a little bit and we can uh, see if your sound is, is working. Yeah, I see your microphone is green, Antonio, but we can't seem to hear you. Hello? There we go. Now we have, we have you. Yep. Welcome, Antonio. Yes, yes. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm speaking from Mozambique. I'm busy in Mozambique, Maputo. I'm now... Um... Spot agent, how I'm a commentator, football commentator, and some responsibility with the Mozambican Federation and the club license. So my question, uh, I know I understand everything what we, we we were talking about or you are talking about in this industry. But my question is, sometimes how can we deal or can we deal with some 
communication barriers that we found daily, especially with the decision makers. As you know, um, in some of the countries like mine, uh, we would love to see the things happen. But we have a lot of people, especially the decision makers, that they are maybe they are not prepared, is my opinion. But they don't allow you and the person to do the thing that must be done. So my question for you to you is, how can we I deal with this kind of um, um, behavior in the organization? I don't know if you get you get. Me. So it's uh, you're you're based in Mozambique and Maputo and. Um... You mentioned that there's some barriers. There's, uh, as you said, lack of professionalization in the industry, and you want to you want to know how you break in or move forward uh, with uh, these types of uh, individuals. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Richard, I don't know if you have any advice for for Antonio. Um, I I think it it's a difficult question to answer because obviously it depends on the on the circumstance. Um, and so I, I don't want to give a generalized answer that doesn't give credit to, to your question, but um, maybe over time I, I can sort of talk to you more specifically about the issue that you have. But I think to give an answer to it, I, I think, um, you know, communication is 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 key to everything, you know, mutual understanding um, is key to absolutely everything. And, you know, whilst half of that is being able to um to to communicate clearly what your issues are so that the other side the decision makers can understand but then also spend time to try and understand it from their perspective so that you can somehow reach an area which you can both agree to um i'm not so sure if that's a, a a great answer to your question because obviously it really depends on many different factors but i think you know being able to communicate your your issue to the decision maker um now if there is communication problems like you say there are then i think it depends on the nature of those problems are they linguistic problems you know for example uh is someone speaking dutch and someone speaking greek i, I know that's not a exactly in, in your case, but, you know, just as an example, in which case, how can you solve that problem? Do you need to look at translators? Now, maybe when you talk about communication problems, it's not about the language necessarily, but it's about the fact that, you know, that, that for some reason there is a blockage and you're not able to get that person to understand where you're coming from. And I think that it's always very easy to get frustrated with the other side because they're not understanding what you're saying. And and I used to be an interpreter because I can really appreciate from experience how very frustrating that is. But I one thing I, I sort of learned from living many, many years in China is if someone doesn't understand what I'm saying, maybe I'm not saying it in the right way. So it's it's very easy to blame the other person to say, oh, they're not understanding what I'm saying. But actually, sometimes and I'm not I'm not saying this is your case. I'm just speaking very generally. But sometimes a little bit of humility helps by saying, OK, they're not understanding what I'm saying. Maybe I'm not saying this in the right way. Um, and trust me, you know, when I first started learning Chinese, it was always because I was saying it in the wrong way. So, you know, th th that that really helps as well. I mean, communication is very is very, very broad. Um, but, you know, and I think it's it's about trying to identify what the problem is um wherever it may be and then finding being finding ways to be proactive in in resolving those issues i i hope that helps um diego uh, uh jabu has a question he, he's uh asked a couple of times oh yes we'll get to jabu in just a minute uh antonio just to to add to what richard was saying which uh, may be interesting we have many students that come from africa that do programs with us and especially on master on a yearly basis and um the point that you make uh, and that you bring up comes up often because uh, sometimes in, in these markets, there tends to be an established um, set of people that are running football or that are taking the decisions and making the decisions in football. Um, and, and it can be a challenge, like, uh, like you said, and like Richard was saying, when there can be 
issues of communications or barriers. And one of the things that some of our students that have done the programs with us from Africa is that they say, well, now I've upskilled myself. Now I have a lot of knowledge that I can bring to the table and can add value to these people. Now, this being said, and, and, and sometimes the case is that um, when somebody comes with new ideas and new skills and, and, and has, uh, you know, latest information from, from other markets, it can represent a challenge and a threat to the established people in those markets. So um, it's not easy, but, um, but in many cases, the fact that uh, you are able to professionalize yourself, that you're able to gain new knowledge and new skills um, can allow you to um, break those communication barriers that, that Richard was speaking about. So something to think about as well, and something that a lot of African students um, consider when they do our, our master is they know that they're going to be in a position that allows them to be um, of much value to those that they want to approach. Um, and if it becomes a question of being a threat or being a challenge, then they know that at some point they will have their opportunity because they've prepared themselves. So hopefully that answers the question, um, Antonio. So we'll get to one last question from Jabu, uh, who, um, as uh, we've seen, Jabu, you've, you've had uh, your hand up, uh, or rather your question for, for a while. So we'll, we'll finish off with you, Jabu. So let me bring you on and you can let us know what, um, what we might be able to help you with. So there we go. So Jabu, the floor is yours. Hopefully you can unmute yourself and we can hear you. So sometimes it takes a little bit of a time delay for the microphone to activate, but Jabu, can you hear us? Um, do you want to speak and uh, maybe we can- uh, Hello, yes, you. can you hear me now? Now we can hear you, yes, go ahead. Oh, perfect, um, Diego and Richard, thank you. That was a really insightful um, sort of session. Um, really got a lot of value from it, thank you so much. Um, I'm a 20 year old law student from South Africa and uh, very much interested in getting into the football industry, um, I'd say. I really am interested in sort of sports law and also getting into governance and leadership positions um, in like different organizations um, in Africa to sort of improve um, the situation of football here. And so my question really to, to Richard, but also to you, Diego, because you have, you both have a really substantial knowledge about uh, the master's program. What sort of transferable skills um, does the program give you? And maybe for Richard, a question for him is, I'm also at the moment uh, still trying to get into the industry. And as I said, doing law at the moment, but also trying to learn different languages like French in order to increase my communication skills in terms of networking. As you said, that's really important. So when you were going into the industry yourself, what sort of guided your, 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 your decisions into taking different roles at different football clubs? Because at the moment, I'm quite a, doing a lot of um, you know, trying to learn a lot of skills and build my knowledge in different things in football, but also in the law, as I said, and there's quite a lot of um, positions in football, like governance and working in clubs, possibly. So what sort of things should I take into consideration as I sort of discover um, what specific role I can take in football, but also how does the masters help um, in me discovering that? Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, thanks, Jabu. Diego, um, I'll, I'll just do my bit first, if, if that's okay. Um, it, it, it's a great question. I think that um, from a personal perspective, you know, the more the more knowledge and the more diverse knowledge you have, obviously, the better. Um, you know, I've uh, I found that the the people that get um, that get to very senior levels within football clubs are those which have. Uh, uh, sort of different skill sets across the across the business, and, and when I say get to those levels, I should probably say the most effective CEOs. They have a knowledge of how sponsorship works, about how operation works, about how stadium stadium management works, and then the best CEOs really also understand how. Probably, actually, their biggest skill set is is understanding how the football works. Um, and so, you know, the fact that you're doing a certificate in football player into intermediation is, I think, a, a really useful skill and uh, a knowledge to have. In terms of 
practically how you move up the ladder or how you step into football. Um, I think that really it's only until you get to very, very senior roles that you start to look after different departments. The reality is that most large football clubs, and, and I mean that as sort of Manchester United, Chelsea, Barcelona, etc., there are many, many different departments, but they do generally tend to be quite siloed so that, um, for example, the commercial director at Liverpool has spent the last 15 years in sponsorship sales. The, uh, the, 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 the former commercial director at, at Inter Milan, my former boss, you know, he spent most of his time, again, in sponsorship sales. So I think what's fantastic, I mean, Diego will talk about the course in more detail, but What's fantastic about this program is it gives you knowledge about all different aspects of football. So at an entry level, you can decide what you're most interested and passionate about. Because if you think, well, I want to go into sponsorship sales because I want to be commercial director, but then you find out after six months that you don't particularly like having sales targets every six months, then you've probably chosen the wrong silo. But if you you know, you're doing a certification in uh, player intermediation and that's something you really enjoy and that you're good at, then that's a really good path to, to, get, into, um, to get into a football club. However, I will just say one thing before, Diego, I know you can talk about the course in more detail. The, if, you, if you do a cross-section of the chief executives at the top football clubs, they tend to be from an accounting background or uh, accounting plus banking. And, and that's, we can talk about this in much more detail on, on the program, um, but that seems to be the way that football is going, is that these very large clubs are, are becoming, you know, they, they are real companies uh, in the sense that they're, they're becoming very professionally run, which is not what they were in the 70s and prior to that. And so they need people with not only knowledge of football, and knowledge of the player side and the and the revenue side, but they also need sort of good skills on the financial side as well. But you know, I'll, I'll Diego, I, I I'll pass over to you and Jabu. I hope that answered your question. Thank you, Rich. No, I, I'll uh, I'll add to to uh, what Rich was saying, Jabu, just to to say that um, you know you're you're studying law at the moment in South Africa, and um, we've had numerous lawyers and particularly sports lawyers that uh, have undertaken this master program. And one of the reasons they've done it or they've decided to do it is precisely because what Richard was saying that, um, you know, in today's industry, um, whether you're in the legal department or in the sponsorship department or in any other area within a club or a football organization, you need to have a wide understanding of the industry. Because if you want to move into a leadership position, um, you're going to need to have that understanding. So one of the things we do in the course is, um, you know, we like to tell uh, our students from the beginning, put on your hat as though you're the CEO of an organization. When we do all the cases and when we do the analysis, don't look at it from one prism. Look at it from the top, because when you do, you're going to understand the different issues. Now, sometimes it's not easy for the students to do that because they don't have all the knowledge or the skills in, in different areas. And that's what the program does. It trains you across a number of, of areas within the football industry so that, you know, you don't become an expert in finance when you do this program. But you get a, an understanding of how to read financial statements and how to understand the numbers at a football club. You don't become a legal expert or a sports lawyer but you understand the legality within football and the regulations. And so when you finish, it's as though you're in the position of someone who understands the industry from across a number of areas. So even if you're in, in, you know, in sports law or in law or, or want to specialize in sports law or in, or in representation, um, as you may know, um, in our, in our football, um, certificate in football player inter intermediation, we not only look at it from the perspective of the agent that we that we do that course, we bring in a wide array of professionals because if you want to be a successful agent, you need to understand it from the perspective of not just the agent, but from the marketing side, from the business side, uh, from the sporting director side, from the scout side. And same in, 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 a, in a business course such as this, you need to understand the different um, areas within the business um, so that you are able to leverage um, your area of expertise, which in your case is law. 
but if you're studying law and you want to move into football, there's opportunities where you can, you know, get involved with endorsement contracts, uh, commercial contracts with sponsors, as, as of course, Richard knows from his experience. Uh, but not only that, I mean, media rights companies sign contracts as well. Um, there's many areas within, um, within the, the legal realm uh, that you can specialize in the football industry. But of course, you need to have that understanding from a business, from a wider business perspective, if you really want to, you know, move forward and and um, and and look at look at everything beyond just um, a legal perspective. Hopefully, that makes sense, Jabu, and that answers your question. I think uh, Jabu may have uh, disconnected just there at uh, at the end as we were finishing. Um, right, so. Given the time as we've run over and we don't want to, um, you know, uh, go over by too much. Uh, I know we, we have people from different parts of the world and the time zones are, are uh, you know, getting quite late now. Uh, we'll wrap it up for now, but if you do have any questions, get in touch with our team. Um, let me put up our slide here. Um, if you want to know more about, you know, obviously the course, but if you want to explore your career goals, your career aspirations in football, get in touch with us, either myself, you have my email there, you can get in touch with Emma, who's our coordinator, or if you just want to send a, a general admissions query, you can talk to our admissions team. Get in touch with us, let us know what you want to do, where you want to take your career, and we can tell you about what we offer and whether it may be of the right fit for you. Sometimes it isn't, sometimes our program is not the right fit for you, and, and, um, and that's absolutely fine. We'll tell you if we feel that there's other programs in the market that you should explore. But if it is something that we feel that can add value to you, you know, we can let you know a little bit more about it. Um, so if you want to check it out, uh, you can go to our website at sbibarcelona.com. There's all the information about the master's program there. Um, or if you want to get in touch with our team, as I said, there's our contact information. Finally, last slide here of our presentation is to say thank you. You've taken an hour and 22 minutes of your time to be here with us tonight. Um, we hope we've delivered value and we've answered some of your questions. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have everybody connecting from across the world. So, um, it's an absolute pleasure and we thank you for connecting here. And finally, to thank you, Richard, for um, your time and for being here tonight. It's, uh, it's been great and we've learned a lot from your experience in, you know, in your trajectory. Thanks, Diego. Always a pleasure and I look forward to hopefully uh, getting to know the, the participants uh, tonight. Fantastic. Great. And thanks to Thomas as well, who provided his testimonial as a, as a student of the master's program. So with that, uh, enjoy your day, afternoon, evening or night. And we hope to talk to you very soon. All the best, everybody. See you next time. Bye bye.